time for another edition of Film Focus. Emily Cook is here with us. Let's talk about what's been happening in the world of Real Vision. How are you, Mrs? Fantastic. Thanks, Ashley. How are you? I'm good, Tar. So what have you been up to? Um, well, the last week's been really exciting, actually. Um, it, Callum Harvey's exhibition finished. He was our guest two weeks ago on the show. Um, and he had an exhibition down at the airport. And part of that exhibition had a film that was by Real Vision um, showing his collection. Uh, and it got some really great feedback. And his his collection indeed got good feedback as well. So that's fantastic for him. I heard some lovely things about the clothes, but also the combination of the, the kind of media in, involved in the show as well as his um, fashion line if you like so um has the exhibition finished now it was just there for a week it has finished but you can view the video online if you um type into google something like um callum harvey uh real vision film solutions his his video of his collection should come up and he's actually taking commissions um for creating garments at the moment so i've not actually had a chance to check out the video myself but what we'll do is we'll share a link to it on our facebook page Fantastic. How does that sound? That sounds very good indeed. So we know that you're a very busy lady and Real Vision Film Solutions never never really clocks off, but you've just seen the fruits of one of your labours earlier on today, haven't you? Or, or kind of a sneaky peek screening of what the final product's going to be. Can you tell us more about it? I can say some stuff about it, yes. Got to um, be careful there, I imagine. Yes, th- there is a programme that is coming out that I worked on as assistant producer in the summer for Greenlight Television, and that is going to come out soon. I can't announce a date yet, um, but that will be about the Manx Grand Prix, and it's a documentary that will focus on newcomers. Um, so that's really, really exciting, and it was an amazing project to work on. What What would your role have been in that, then, for someone who doesn't know what an assistant producer is? Oh, well, ahead of the festival, I was contacting different individuals working out their availability, speaking to them about their backstories, working out who to follow, then scheduling the different events over the festival that we wanted to include, then speaking to the various riders who were going to be in it, interviewing them, deciding which shots would be captured. And then when it actually came to the festival, it was basically interviewing the different people, logging the shots. It was basically absolutely non-stop, but it was great fun. And um, a really a role filled with responsibility by the sounds of things. So it must be nice now to kind of see the the final product starting to come together. Yes, um, it's looking really good actually, I'm, and I'm quite pleased about it. So um, it was fantastic to. I've had something televised that I've worked on in a in America, and earlier in the year, and so this will be the first in the UK, other than some um, BBC report that I helped on that will be televised in the UK. So. Exciting times for Real Vision. It is. What else has been happening then? I hear you've been on a bit of an adventure. Yes, um, all of the film bods on the island um, went up to Mountain View Media Village. What which, is it? Well, that's the new name for the island studios. Ah. So it's change management and a few things are being done a bit differently up there. The guy behind it is really proactive. Um, which is great. Uh, it's a fantastic facility. It's huge. You've got the great big hangars. And in fact, one of them is so large that it has enough space to build a three-storey building set within it. Wow. So that is pretty massive. Really big. Um, so it was it was fantastic to look around there. And also there's a gravestone um, out the back, which Jude Law put there. After he'd finished acting with his role... It was the last shoot and wrapping on Dom Hemingway. So what he actually did was he took all the prosthetics and put them into a little miniature coffin, which the chippies made up. And then they buried that underground outside the studio and put a cross up. Wow. So it's an actual, it's a, it's not a prop that's going to be kind of rehashed and used again. That's going to stay no. there forever. Well, I've, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know, like a time capsule. Yes. <laughs> That's exciting. Jude Law leaves his mark on the Isle of Man then. He's branded us. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully he only buried the character and not his career. Maybe. We'll have to see. Any idea as to when Dom Hemingway's out in the summer, maybe? Um, currently, it's not mentioned. Normally, on what happens is on IMDB, which is Internet Movie Database, it will come up with a 
estimated time of release that's not being said as yet okay so we'll just have to keep an eye on that and you'll be back in and i'm sure you'll be the first to tell us as and when it is due to hit the silver screen now then on to the next item on our agenda here at film focus with real vision film solutions what's our one to watch this week emily the one to watch this week is bafta nominated film the imposter which is directed by bart layton And I'm really excited about this. I have been since nine months ago when I actually heard about it. Basically, the story to the film is about a 13-year-old boy um, from Texas who goes missing for three years. And um, his grieving, traumatised family um, are then astonished and overjoyed when he actually turns up three years later. However, he's found in Spain and um, the the authorities bring him back home and... The very strange thing is the fact that um, he looks completely different to the son three years ago of how he looked. It's a bit strange that the family, because they're so grieved, they actually start to accept him. Now, I know it sounds like I've given a lot away there about the plot of the film, but I actually haven't because it's about that process of him being accepted and what happens from that point onwards. And uh, this is out on DVD this week, is it? But yes. also it's been shown on the island this week, hasn't it? Yes, it was shown last Wednesday at Films in Peel, um, which is amazing that they've actually they've got that film there because this is a fantastic one to watch. It might not be um, your classic Hollywood blockbuster, but The Guardian has described it as gripping and brutal and it's probably one of the most... Um, intriguing films you might actually get to see and as tense as any conventional thriller or action film um, just because it's based on true events um, and it's a documentary it actually makes it far more poignant. So would you say that it tests the audience in that in that sense rather than going and kind of just submersing yourself in a romantic comedy or whatever it's going to really challenge the audience and make them feel? I think that's what he hopes to do the director with it um obviously it's down to the the viewer to go and make their own mind up i would hate to say yeah this is what's going to happen when you watch it um but it's been rated really highly rotten tomatoes they've reviewed it with 95 percent that's massive for them isn't it because they're a skeptical bunch they are a skeptical bunch and imdb has given it 7.6 um so it looks like a fantastic film. So it's been critically acclaimed. Um, another film that's doing really well with regards to uh, award nominations and and actually just cinema cinema viewings is Les Miserables. We mentioned it last week. Uh, it's still doing massive things, isn't it? And so much so that it's been extended at the Palace Theatre. Yes, it is still screening nightly from 7pm. Um, there's It's still pretty much sold out. Um the reason I haven't been is because I've been working on the feature film that's being shot over here and doing night shoots, so I haven't actually had the opportunity, even though I'm sure I would have been able to wangle a ticket by now. I told you you should go and sit on the steps. Oh, no. That's not my <laughs> style, Ashley. I knew that last week. I'll I sit in the it. projection booth. <laughs> so if people can't get tickets to go to Les Mis, but they want to go to the cinema, what else? Well, at the moment, go? there's something for everybody on at the Isle of Man at the cinema. Texas Chainsaw 3D is currently screening as well at, at the Palace Cinema at 8pm. So obviously that's a horror. And not one certific- for the faint-hearted. What certificate is it? It's, not it's an 18. For- right, OK. Um, and the fact that it's 3D and the word chainsaw is in the title it's going to be fairly gruesome unless you you could think it was a documentary about how to make (laughs) chainsaws in texas all right that would be a big mistake though wouldn't it ashley yeah imagine turning up for that i'm not sure if that would be my cup of tea to be honest well i remember when i was eight i went along to see um cinderella or something of that sort i'm sure it was cinderella and we got the screenings muddled up and i ended up sitting there watching bill and ted Oh dear. So, which is completely not what you'd expect when you want to go and see Cinderella when you're a little girl. Yeah, so maybe I should go and um, experience something different. I can just imagine sitting sort of behind my coat or behind my hands for the entire hour and a half or however long it is. 92 minutes. Well, there you go. It wasn't far off, was I? No. Uh, an hour and 32 minutes. Um, what else can we see if we're not into Texas Chainsaw 3D? Well, our one to watch a few weeks ago, Impossible... Um, is still screening at the Broadway cinema um, and that's at 7.30 nightly. That was the one about the tsunami and that family out there starring Ewan McGregor. And there's also a select number of screenings of Life of Pi still on, which is phenomenal that it's still screening. It's been about a month, I think, now. Uh, Yes, I think it's definitely, as I said a few weeks ago, not one to miss.
So then it's time for you to delve into our back catalogue of Saturday Night Live sessions, dust off some of the old videos and handpick one for us uh, to replay on Saturday Night Live because that's what we do. We get together, we get some local artists up every so often and chat to them and record some of their own tracks and a cover, but you very kindly come and film the videos for us. So who are we shining a spotlight on this week? This week it will be Chris Gray with his track We Fall Down. I really enjoyed this song um, and this is one that he obviously wrote himself. Um, He's doing some amazing things at the moment as well, isn't he, Ashley? Yeah, and he's got a gig coming up in February time with the delightful Clara Barker. So um, more more than likely we'll be speaking to him ahead of that. But for now, this is Chris Gray on Saturday Night Live with We Fall Down, chosen by Emily Cook of Real Vision Film Solutions. We'll see you next week. See you next week. (laughs) 